This is Mongolian Mindset, and today we're going to be dropping a gem on for you guys. Um, Dario Nardi just released these four courses. Um, these courses have over 20 hours, um, over 160 uh, lectures, and 150 downloads spread over four courses. Um, so we're going to be going into clicking in and showing you guys a little sample of it. Um, we'll be reading over the stuff. So he's got the first one, find your best fit uh, type. And then that one's gonna be cracking the Maya Briggs type code and triangulating your type in subtypes. So he believes in four subtypes based off the brain imaging that he's done. And if you don't know, Dario Nardi is the GOAT, I believe, of psychological type. Um, if you don't know who Dario Nardi is, I, I don't know where you've been. But uh, yeah, um, we'll get, so the second one is develop your uh, personality. So you're gonna be exploring the eight uh, functions and developing more confident skill around each. Um, this is this is pivotal because a lot of people are spreading a lot of like misinformation and this is a course where you can actually learn the actual facts the truth um, and it's backed up by neuroscience man um, by Dario Nardi um, with over 500 brand scans uh, so he's got a third course coaching team leaders and change facilitate facilitate change and growth using pro tools and fun challenging and creative activities and he's got the fourth one, which is the one I'm most excited about, is the neuroscience of personality. And then that one, he's going to be going over 500 brain scans that he's recently done and uh, how to take uh, that to the next level. So, yeah, we're going to be uh, going through a little bit of the courses for you guys. Um, we're going to be dropping the link to the courses in the description below. And no, we do not get a commission on this. This is just a... A way to uh, spread Dario Nardi's uh, material, and we believe he's the GOAT, and uh, we want to really stop the misinformation. So let's get into it. So, the first one find your personality type, and it's like what you'll learn, you'll likely, your likely best fit personality. Uh, the basic uh, personality, including history and core ideas, ways people use type as a shortcut to better meet life challenges, how to use the free cognitive process assessment, a highly validated online personality questionnaire so i'm guessing that's keys to cognition um and then that test i think it's like 48 questions and then afterwards he gives you a type and then he gives you two other ones that are recommended whenever i take the test i always get intj i've taken that thing like five times but it always recommends um entj and istj and i'm an entj um <clears throat> An exercise to test your skill at profiling others. Words of wisdom from eight professional coaches and consultants. Uh, the 16 Maya Briggs types and the four subtypes of each for 64 personality totals. So uh, Dario Nardi believes in this. He has neuroscience back in the four subtypes. Um, I forget exactly what they're all called, but it's different based on the brain scans. Um, depending on, like, some are dominant, some are harmonizing. Um... I forget the other two, I'm sorry. Um, but um, he goes in depth with those, and you can figure out uh, which other subtypes you are. Like for myself, I'm a dominating ENTJ, so um, 8W7 would be my Enneagram. Um, how to crack the four letter Maya Briggs type code, how to work from multiple data points to triangulate down to anyone's best fit type. <clears throat> Four applications for romantic relationships, problem solving, and personal growth, ethical use, research database, and professional organization. So we're going to go into it and see, um, just to give you guys a sample. So, start this over. Of the four functions, we've talked about sensing and intuiting. Now we'll talk about thinking and feeling. And these are more the rational functions. And this is sort of interesting. One is that the, these terms which Jung came up with were originally in German and it means something slightly different. Than and I'm gonna be honest, there, there's no way you can get this type of material. I mean, I mean, Dario's charging uh, 20 bucks a course, so that's 80 bucks for this material. And um, to be honest, Dario could easily charge 500 bucks for this shit. Um, um, and if you order it now, I think it's like 25% off, so you're spending 60 bucks on all this material. If you're serious about MBTI and you're serious about understanding others and you actually want to actually be able to use the predictive power and change your life and others, yeah, I'd grab this. Than they do in English. 
Uh, but nonetheless, we're going with these English terms. And when we think of feeling, we're going to think of like emotions, for example. And that's not what feeling means here. That, that feeling is just as rational as thinking is, is that feeling is something that is based in values, in identity, in beliefs. Now, the origin of those values may not be a rational process, but the person has a value system. We all have a value system, whether we're conscious of that or not. We all have a personal identity. We all are aware of societies of values around us to some extent, maybe a little bit, maybe a lot. And the question is, how much are we going to adapt to that? So feeling is attentive to this values-based world and things like personal identity and social identity and is making decisions within that context that are going to align with their values and with the social expectations or at least harmony in some way. Thinking, on the other hand, is not concerned with those things. Yes, folks with a thinking bias or preference have personal values like everybody else, and everyone engages in thinking, but the thinking we mean here is not cognition in general. It means some kind of objective criteria, framework, uh, logic, deduction, using measurement, um, so that if we need to make a decision, maybe about what we're going to wear, and think, well, I'm gonna look it up, I can see on the app it's gonna be 68 degrees today in the morning, but it's gonna to rise to 78 degrees in the afternoon, so I wanna take a light jacket maybe in the morning, knowing that I can take that off and I'll have a t-shirt underneath in order to enjoy the afternoon. So this person is making this very sort of like level-headed decision in a way, but then extract that, extrapolate that to many other aspects of life, and there's some ways using points, measurements, some kind of conceptual model categories. Of course, we're talking about categories here. ST. Sensing, intuiting, thinking, feeling. Um, and then we're saying that there's like a dichotomous quality to them. That they're sensing versus intuiting. Maybe we can't really do both at once and we're gonna have a bias for one. Thinking versus feeling, we can do both, but not at the same time and we're gonna have a bias. That's a mental model. And the sort of the mental model is something out here and we look at the mental model and then we're like, where do I fit within this? And then like, what does it say about me? So there's a little bit of objectifying quality that goes with it. And that's a, sort of a, a little bit of the, the basic difference between thinking and feeling. Okay. So that's in one of the courses here. I mean, in the first one, um, like we said, there's walking the introduction um, there is type is special. There is take the CPA cognitive process assessment, um, cracking a four letter code. You got case studies. Uh, you're getting to know yourself, exploring the 16 types, finding your subtype, for example, application, type profile and practice sessions, ethical use, and further study. And that's all in course one. Not the, Dario, you've done an outstanding job, man. All right, <clears throat> so in the second one, Develop your personality. Um, what you'll learn is the story of type as a dynamic tool for development and depth understanding of the eight Jungian functions, aka cognitive processes, the unique function stack for each, access to 32 pages of well-organized quotes from Jung and the functions, what works, uh, what to work on when a roadmap for self-improvement for each type, for the fun M&M's activity with a demonstration with a client, definition based on 15 years of neural image research. Like we say, Dario is, he's pulling the TE, man. He, he's got a neural science behind it. He's not pulling stuff out of his ass. Um, yeah. The function um, health meter in the spiral of development is someone in the dark grip. Obviously, the inferior in a bad way. Um, happens to me from time to time with my FI. Um, I can be in that sometimes. Um, culturally adapted or the whole with joy. How to build skills following the eight keys to self-leadership. That's a book there in itself. Um, I'm pretty sure Dario has a book on that. Uh, words of wisdom from eight professional coaches and consultants. So we're going to click on it. And we're going to run some of, something from there. Uh, let's see. Don't want to hit that. Okay, let's just give them an overview. Processes overview. Extroverted thinking is this kind. So let's get into these eight functions just to get a sense of what they're like. 
And remember, they're organized in a certain way, so I'm gonna talk about them in a certain way. And I'm just gonna give a sentence or two. And what I'd like you to notice as we go through them is that they're all processes. That they all have a way to start, that there's something ongoing, um, that they have a feedback that they consider and self-correcting mechanisms that they're adapting in nature. Um, and so when we talk about extroverted sensing, for example, is the active adapter role or they're engaging in active adapting those are verbs those are things that like basketball players i watched the game last night and i was like yo there's so much etsy in that like so much just being able to react so fast and change motion and understand what this person's cutting and that person's cutting like lebron james is a great passer because he's an etsy dom that uh i'm gonna say just that we do out in the world behaviorally but it's actually a whole psychological experience so let's take a look at these eight. Uh, we will start with the perceiving processes. And this is sensing and intuiting. And what do these look like? Well, we talked about sensing as being this concrete orientation of what is and what was. Extroverted sensing is enjoying the external world using your five senses and taking concrete actions based on options before you and being able to take those actions in a really smooth, effective way. Then we have introverted sensing, cautious protecting. So rather than active adapting, it's cautious protecting. Reference a massive storehouse of rich past experiences as you cultivate familiarity, comfort, and stability. And so this person is really drawing upon this huge storehouse and the power of habit for example, to memorize a piece of music and then to be able to play that back perfectly. Or having a very, very strong awareness of their cultural traditions and to carry those on. And working from the storehouse of experience every day of an incredible amount of rigid detail, which is accurately remembered. Then we have intuiting as a process. And it too can show up in two ways. And one is the extroverted way, which is orienting to the outer world. And this is perceiving, pursuing, and playing with life's many potential possibilities and facilitating the promising ones. So again, this is not just about noticing possibilities, it's interacting with those possibilities. And like, oh, you know, these different things, it has this potential, like how can I pull this out? What if we did it this way and turned it upside down or inside out or connected it with something from some other context? And then we have introverted intuiting, keen foreseeing. Focus on the inner hidden world of the unconscious through dreams, visions, symbols, and abstract ideas. So the person who really consciously is using introverted intuiting, what they have is a sense that over time, the storehouse builds up of abstract impressions, of symbols, of dream material, of things from the unconscious, and they're very comfortable working with that. And that means working with the unconscious itself to say, for example, I have a difficult problem and instead of trying to think through it, I'm gonna put that on the back burner and I'm gonna sleep on it and tomorrow morning I'm gonna wake up and maybe I'll have an answer. I mean, we all do that sometimes, right? So this is an example where yes, there are people who really rely upon this process for their creativity, for their problem solving and so on. So sensing and intuiting each in two different ways. Then we have the judging processes, thinking and feeling. All right, so we're just gonna stop that there. So we're gonna make the video too long. Okay, so that's number two. And in there we have uh, the introduction. We have section two, the form, uh, form four functions to eight cognitive processes. Um, we have experience with the eight processes with ENFP Anya. We have sense and processes in depth intuitive processes in depth that was just the overview uh, thinking processes in depth feeling process in depth the function stack the uh the assess and function functional health uh, skill building activities and what's next that's all in um the second one okay now we're gonna be getting into the third one um coaching teams leading leaders and change what you'll learn for uh, a broad four-step coaching model an alternate way to arrive at the 16 types kind of like how we do with the uh, temperament interaction styles and temperaments temperaments 
interact styles. Um, the nine essential leadership behaviors, trust, care, openness, speaking up, feedback, learning, teamwork, managing dilemmas, and creativity. Like I said, this is this is next level stuff here. Um, nine, yes, complete coaching activities to encourage acuity, flex, flexibility, and better outcomes usable by yourself or with clients one-on-one in small groups. How to help people overcome one-sidedness and bring greater joy, creativity, and effectiveness to their life using the magic diamond. This is the magic diamond here. Okay. Pick it up. I highly recommend you pick up anything with Dario and Artie on it, but that book there is phenomenal. Uh, the ethical use of psychological type and type tools with clients. The four temperaments in depth. How the nine leadership behaviors manifest for each Maya Briggs type with coaching tips for each plus the links to nine points of the popular Enneagram. Yeah, I want to see that. Um, for Enneagram, I'm a 8W7, so I'd be interested to see what you got for that. Um, I'm not really into Enneagram that much, but I'll be looking more into it in the future. Um, the four sides of the young and psych, persona, ego, shadow, and collective unconscious. Um, words of wisdom from eight professional coaches and consultant. Let's go and check that out. Let's go. Let's, let's grab one of these videos that Dario got going. Okay. Um, let's see. The four bands interact with that. Let's go to let's go to temperament. Let's let's go deep. Let's go into the rationals. That's mine. Let's talk about the theorist pattern, also theorist. called rationals, or maybe if there's a color, it's the green color. And what is it as we dig into this pattern? Well, first of all, theorist automatic. We're all about competence of mastery and expertise. Exactly by itself suggests words like theorizing and it suggests models and design and talking and thinking. And sure, that's certainly part of it. So the essential motivators are acquiring knowledge, competence, expertise, self mastery, uh, interested in progress, interested in learning, um, interested in principles and abstract principles. And their primary contribution in any organization is innovating, innovating tools and ideas. Uh, some of them more on the idea end of the spectrum, some of them more on the tool end of the spectrum, but nonetheless, there's this quality of innovation. Among the, the 16 types, we're talking about those with intuiting and thinking as their preferred processes. So that is... Uh, folks ETJ, with ETJ. introverted or extroverted intuiting and introverted or extroverted thinking. However, those happen to play out. It's the four different types. INTP, so INTJ, Let's talk a little bit about the needs and values ENTJ, and dig into that. ENTP. Um, it's the people of this temperament want to understand the operating principles of the universe as well as everything that's part of the universe that we're going to address. I mean, that we could possibly know. So if we get into like advertising, it's like, well, what are the essential principles of advertising? How can I make this work? Otherwise, they sort of feel like they're just afloat in a sea of things. And so not what that means is they're looking for the, the system behind something. Like if I'm going to learn a new sport or I'm going to play a game or something, I'm looking for the system behind it. Because if I can manipulate the system, I can always get what I want. Not really knowing what it, what's going on or what they're doing or how to think about something. Because if they can understand it, they can think about it. And if they can think about it, they can analyze and then find leverage points and find strengths and weaknesses and then target certain things. Mm -hmm. And in a sense, get scientific about stuff. Even if they're not actually in the sciences. It could be, for example, the principles of art. Like It doesn't um, even matter. Like Me and my friends will go play skee-ball. And I'm trying to figure out the science behind how to hand, how to hit the uh, hundred, the hundred every time. Like I'm trying to figure out exactly how I can get it in there, which leverage I can use, which arm I can use. Can I bounce it off the wall? Like where is the leverage? Can I use? But like my SP friend, he's like, bro, I gotta feel the ball. I'm like, yo, there's a specific spot on this this thing that I can hit to get into that thing, and that's what I'm looking for. Uh, along the way, they're going to value then. Uh, logical consistency, alignment between theory and evidence. And again, there may be an emphasis, some value more theory, some value more the data that informs potentially theory. Um, they're going to value learning for its own sake even because we can learn stuff that maybe we weren't expecting would be helpful, but fills in a lot of blanks and is like, oh, this is an area that I hadn't thought about this area over here. 
But um, this really then connects and informs because they have this intuiting preference that comes with it. Um, and a very conceptual learning style. Now, um, talents that go with it, as we can imagine, are going to be around um, making conceptual models, using those models, creating and using and understanding frameworks. So a framework is more than a model. A model is just like, you know, there are these four things to keep track of. Um, conceptual framework is a whole system. Personality type is more than just a four-letter code. It has these like cognitive processes. It has temperament, as we'll discover. There's interaction styles. There are these coaching applications. There are these mini models that if we use them together, it can interface with other frameworks like Enneagram. Um, we can get into the Jungian stuff eventually and talk about things like shadow and persona and the unconscious. It is like this enormous framework that touches on everything about life and potentially can get very deep but also is useful in the detail. So one of the things you see is interesting about these folks, it can come as a surprise, is at times it can be very, very theoretical, but at the other times they're gonna express the fact that they're interested in the pragmatic outcome. Like, does this accurately describe what it is that I'm observing? Or can I use this information to build a machine that actually works? Or a piece of art or um, people technology? So maybe you've heard, for example, of neuro-linguistic programming is a method of using language in order to build rapport with people and to help people deepen and improve whatever it is that they're doing, often by modeling after somebody else. So using language and constructing, that's like a model for how to construct models of what people are doing. And that is sort of like what's going on with theorists. Uh, and then we get this idea of like, well, there's always a flow and progress so again, the person is not static. Learning and adaptation are part of the temperament inherently. Just like every tree or animal has in it, not just like a dog is not just a puppy. A puppy is just a phase of being a dog. And there's a whole growth sort of sequence or potential that's there as part of a pattern. So learning adaptation, so there's usually scientific. We're gonna do some research, we're gonna do some observation, we're going to build and try out sort of prototype something. Okay, so this is part of the third one. Uh, but we're not trying to make the video too long. On um, the third one, um, they have the key concepts. Uh, they have the, the four temperament, the motiv uh, motivation, um, the bearings, interaction styles, uh, coaching leadership behaviors, onions reflect on leadership, the five fun coaching activities, four more coaching activities, the young psych, uh, synergy of opposites, what's next. Okay, so that's all in the third one. And the one I'm the most excited about is the psychological types four, um, the neuroscience of personality, what you'll learn here, uh, what neuroscience says about personality type today based on five over 500 brain scans, okay? Thank you, Dario and Artie, for the work. We will happily steal this knowledge from you. <clears throat> um, brain basic, including the functional regions, brain uh, waves, and neural networks. Um, brain scans, once possible favorite brain regions using a coloring poster. So there's, there's brain regions. Uh, if you follow his book, uh, The Neuroscience of Personality, this is like the beginner one. Um, and you'll see like someone like myself, who is an ENTJ, um, we're able to actually use the quickest route to uh, to answer things, um, but that doesn't mean that we're always right. So you always got to check behind ENTJs. Um, I used to have a problem sometimes where I finish my homework fast and then uh, think I got a hundred and some, and then be mad when I got like a ninety-two, and I was like, "How did I miss that?" But that's the one thing about ENTJs; they go so fast uh, that they make mistakes, and that is in this book. So. Um, this is just the beginning one. I mean, not the beginning one, but the older version. Um, what's this made? Um, I want to say this is from, I want to say 2011 or something. Mm, damn, Dario. I can't help you out here, buddy. What the hell is this shit? Okay. But, uh, what does it say that's in? Mm, yeah, 2011. Damn, I was right. Woo! Look at that. 
Um, the clear scientific support for Jungian concepts like extroversion, introversion, and judging versus perceiving function, emotional dynamics in the brain, emotions are intertwined in everything we do, the analytic analytic versus holistic styles with a deep dive into four development types dominant there we go the four types dominant creative normalizing and harmonizing so i will fall into the dominant brain scans for the entj um how a brain imaging uh session typically goes so he does brain imaging um and whenever they do like the meetups i think with personality hacker uh, i think dar is doing one in pittsburgh very soon um, but I will uh, reach out to Dario and uh, get more information on that. We're also interviewing Dario Nardi um, next weekend. Um, so uh, we'll comment below um, things that you would want us to ask Dario Nardi. And I'll make a list and I'll, and I'll ask him. Um, Dario's like a wealth of knowledge, man. And the, the crazy thing is when he starts talking, he closes his eyes because you can tell he's going in the NI to answer something. <laughs> Um, how people tend to use their brains differently over time and across activities, neurodiversity on teams, description of the eight Jungian functions based on brain imaging results, how the brain shifts from a person's um, biological age, career, culture, uh, organization roles, and personality. And if I'm correct, um, I remember Dario saying the biggest thing, I think under 25 is actually... Uh, gender and then after that is career and then everybody kind of makes them way back to a wholesome uh, body as they age past that uh, if I'm correct if I'm remembering that right um, body mind practices uh, breath work yoga and the role of the autonomous autonomic nervous system so ANS so let's go into it and give you guys a preview okay what do we want Okay, examples of image uh, sessions. Let's get into that. Now, if you could bring your thumbs to where my thumbs are. Perfect. Perfect. Yes. Uh, uh. Some people try and reach from above, and I'm like, no. It's taken. That real estate was taken. Yeah. Not that I love this angle, but. That's right. There we go. You can let go. And Dario has told me that he has these wireless now, so you don't have to have all these cords and stuff. And if I'm right, I think Dario only charges 200 for these. That's, like I said, Dario will be giving insane value for cheap. Turn back this way. And just have a slight turn to the right. You're right. Actually, are you right or left handed? I'm right handed. You're right handed. Try not to be too animated with your left arm, because okay. this is we will be putting in these electrical grounds. They sort of fit over your earlobes as if you were wearing clip-on earrings. We clearly do not have slippery ears. Oh, uh, is that a, an That's advantage a or a disadvantage? It's, just, uh, it's not convenient for me. Okay. Some people's ears, like just everything, just slips off them. Yeah. Uh, nice family man. He was a nice guy. Yeah. yeah. And uh, if I got it, if I got my name right, you know, he was really. Yeah. Takes more, co takes more courage. It's more, no, it's not religious. It is really a single kind of ritualistic uh -huh. outfit to confuse the clients, make sure they believe what you say. It's all based around that at the end of the day. It's all based around that at the end of the day. So do you have a summary statement on uh, what, 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 is the, what, is the, what is the inner justification for these sorts of... Uh, Where I was... Right. Yeah, because because yeah. society has to deal with this. When when do you are there any signs before and is there anything you can predict? Or not? Okay. They're well, not my friends on Facebook though. <laughs> um, Should I try to go into like a yogic? <laughs> We're gonna do that in a most moment. Calm moment. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do that. Let's make sure it's recording. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so now we'll start with, with some a uh, couple minutes of meditation. Just sort of relax in your seat. Mm -hmm. Put your feet flat on your ground. And relax your feet and your legs. Relax your shoulders. Close your eyes. And I'd like you to focus on your breathing.
Jesus Christ. Breath work. Yes. Okay, now we're going to do, um, okay, so you have three minutes to, oh, wait, actually, I have these in the wrong order. I'm so silly. I'll do this one first. You can use the paper for scratch. Two years of calculus took two. That's bad. Is that fine? I find a torture a person in concentration camp. Government assembly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also the difference is, is a heretic is against the institution, a blasphemer is against the actual dogma. So Protestants, for example, were heretics, but they weren't blasphemers. Mm. I didn't know this. I love it. I guess he's probably testing, I guess, I guess he's testing brainstorming, I'm guessing. Idea. Like uh, any Dom would probably be able to give you a ton of things. An idea for a cashier at the market. Cashiers at the mar cashier at the markets um, tend to have sad eyes. Cashier of lost souls. Of lost souls, um, the cashier of lost souls needs to not hoard those souls. So, uh, as you can see, it's quite in-depth here. Um, we got the brain wiring subtypes. Uh, we got the 64 variants. Um, I guess you got the dominant is the more driven and confident. Uh, creative is more exploratory and social. Uh, normalized is more conventional and specialized. Um, harmonizing is more empathetic and reflective. He has all of those in there, and he goes, this, his assignment, he says, what's your subtype? Um, Body-mind practices, uh, why body-mind practices, um, take your stress pulse, call young on yoga, type-specific body-mind archive, try yoga with personality in mind, and the last one, parting thoughts, okay? Uh, what do you cover? Interview with professionals on the future of type, and what's next for you? Okay, so um, that's all from Dario Nardi, uh, guys. Um, if you guys uh, would grab that material, um, I think it would uh, end a lot of the misinformation out here um, and allow you to um, accurately type yourself and others. And um, it's very well in depth. Um, thank you, Dario, uh, for this. Um, but yeah, uh, this is Mongolian Mindset, and we're out. Like, comment, subscribe.